This is the fourth one this okay. time. Okay. Okay. Let's record. Good luck. All right. We've got the blessings. Okay. That's what we need. Let's roll. <laughs> okay. All right. So this one's Destiny. If you watch the... Uh, Let's play, though. Uh, if you watch the thumbnail version of it, it's completely free. My... Uh, real time number two, you can check it out on my Gumroad channel or my YouTube. Uh, but I'm going into this thinking that, hey, I already have a thumbnail, you know, planned out. With this the... looks like a Gillette <laughs> razor uh, Gillette shaving. Is... I thing. get that. Yeah, yeah. It's got a little thing in the middle. I think I told you that it looked like that. Yeah, you did. And you looked over my shoulder yeah. and you're like, this looks like a Gillette. Uh, I was going to make it like three So times. are you getting paid for that right now? To it's for possible. product placement? Yeah, is this a product placement right now? Well, you're not supposed to tell them. Does it shave over a smooth surface? What do they call it? Do they have any like words like for that? Electric razor. Electric like, razor um, surface profiling kind of thing or something like it that? It glides. It just totally... Just... Okay, so how did you do this? You, first you had this painting here, and the reason you did the 3D was to match it. The, the reason I did the 3D was I wanted to get a, a somewhat of a more accurate um, volume down before I started the design on top of this so I just basically you don't need my and this is the other one I did I didn't like it too much but so I tried something different so this this is a little bit more volumetric a little bit fatter design but uh, the reason why I did well, the this, distance is stronger there yeah I feel I feel like I needed to just go into ZBrush and light it in a way that that's the same angle with my with my thumbnail already so I did it in a way that's that's light and shadow and this is as far as I'm going to go in terms of details. There's no actual hard edge, you know, rendering hard edge sculpting on the uh, hard surface sculpting on the ZBrush model here. Oh, Neva, you probably need to sit in a little bit closer. We've got one mic here, but oh. I'm going to lean in a little bit. Okay. On the side. All right. All well, right. What if I want to drink some of my delicious beverage? <laughs> Which you just kind of have to sip it on the I side. Get, I guess I'm just gonna have to. Okay. <laughs> uh, mm. Hey man, there's a beverage here. We're just getting cozy, it's all right. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Um, so you don't need a, a ZBrush lesson from me. This is very primitive stuff. You can get that from a lot of the different sources online. You could get that from just fooling around the just ZBrush. Just fooling around, to be ZBrush. honest. Yes. So the two tools you gotta use is uh, clay buildup. And there's another no, surface No, no, no. What are you doing now? What are you doing now, though? Thank you. The same thing I always do when I start a painting is to make a wash over this. Um, get that black and white looking, at least a little bit of base wash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, basically, you're killing the black and white. You're giving it... not. So, it's not black and white. It's black and uh, teal off and or black and yellow, very barely. Or we something already like know this is a Destiny fan art. So, the bottom of it, I guess, you, you get that you know sand dune like okay, desaturated okay. feel but the point is that i think you, it's just that you don't want just black and white you want to make it black in some sort of color right yeah so black in some sort of color when you start picking you know you're not picking black and white you're picking into the colors that's uh, when you when you paint over top of it you're dealing with actual color value so i'm always going back into the color picker trying to get some color down really early on mm. It's intimidating to do that because it's hard to want. Sometimes the black and white grayscale works so well that you feel like if you paint on top of it, you'll kill your values. But it seems like it's always so worth it when you and whenever I see your paintings. Uh, in the beginning, when you're just doing a, a overlay wash, you're not really affecting the values that much. You're actually affecting the saturation and just the colors and the hues. Um, so you, when you pick in the midtones when the colors, the only thing you worry about is how how much the, the saturation slider you want. So the more to the right on the color picker, obviously, it's going to get more saturated. So mm -hmm. you've got to be a little bit careful about that. Ooh, that's nice what you're doing right there. So I don't, I'm not sure if it's all because it was already there, the information, but just the fact that you kind of put that little gradient there, that's hot. Yeah, you don't need to do a lot of surface detail in ZBrush modeling because I'm just doing this really quick mm. to drop it in. But all the surface flattening, all the little... So it, become, it becomes sexy later. It becomes... Because you can paint. You can paint all these stuff in already. I mean, you can start with even without uh, the ZBrush model. So, so it does, that's only just there to give you a base to work on. Right? So so when you do it in ZBrush, you're doing all the like the, the, the hard work, so to speak, in terms of volume. And then you could do the sexifying later. And, and basically messing around in ZBrush, trying to 
trying to to get a shape going. You know, you, mm-hmm. if you if you want to design with shapes and you want to do that while rendering light and shadow, that's a little bit more difficult, more work in Photoshop. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to separate that out just in ZBrush, trying to cheat a little bit because all the light and shadow is not gonna. You don't need to render that, right? You just need to put a light over there, and if it doesn't work, you know, shift the lighting in another direction, mm. and you get all, all that sexy light and shadow with your volumes. Mm. Oh, you're using my words now, sexy. That's the word, yeah. right? Sexy light and shadow. Yeah. There we go. I suppose it's pretty sexy. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay. So, still very quick, um, just brushing in something on the. On hold the on, hold ship. on, Frank. We got some lasso going got in some here. Lasso going hold on, around. we gotta we gotta be quiet for the lasso. I'm just gonna. Hold on one second. We take, love take we, the guys out in this in this apartment. We love lasso, so <laughs> we we kind of we take a moment to just kind of like let the lasso I should, work. I should dedicate another video just painting on lasso. I oh, I'll never shut be, up if you do that. <laughs> oh, okay, so what the reason the, the way you're using are, it now is because you're just trying to paint around it. Yeah, right? that's one of the elements that uh, that's gonna speed up your painting process. If you're starting off painting, lasso is your best friend. Let's see there. That's actually a kind of a nice dynamic little uh, spread there. Um, a little bit of texture brushing. It's not too. Uh, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't see texture at this point, really. Yeah. So the the video right now is speed up. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, I hope yeah, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm not <laughs> going to be painting this fast. You're working you're, a little too fast. If yeah. you were wondering, it is very speed up. Uh, the only reason why is this is a pretty gigantic painting. It, it took about five hours and forty minutes to complete in total. So there's no way I'm going to make you sit through all of it. Um, the speed up version, the the first part is going to be about fifty minutes. So this is going to cover all the idea development, all the initial uh, uh, planning, and all that. All right. What are you doing right now? You trying to like. Trying to get, get the the you know the ground established. Trying to get all the the background mountains and the lighting sort of just laid in there. Oh, so okay. Well, the, well, well, at this point, at this point, you thought you needed some mountains to kind of unify it. At this point, remember the lasso. That's trying to put the character on a separate layer. So I'm painting behind them without actually you know painting. Uh, over yeah, yeah, I got these. you, I got you. But at this point, you still thought you needed something on the horizon line to unify the background to the foreground. Because you gotta realize. Well, because because I'm a spoiler spoiler alert, fellas. I I secretly know what the end painting looks like, so I'm just kind of asking questions. In terms of, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. All right. So the, you know, at this point in the early game, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to gauge how far back the horizon line actually goes. Mm-hmm. So okay. Well, if you'll... I were to put it in the wrong place, then the the scale of the ship would be bad. It will, it will be kind of off um, by a little bit. I'll bring this point up again later. You'll see why. You'll see why. In in about mm, what is it like? How long is this? This will be like a two hour video, one hour. It's one video? and a half if with a total of two parts together. About about one hour in, you're gonna see why I asked about this because so, I think something changes. Yes, after the first part, we're actually going to go in the second part, which I'll start using photographic uh, uh, textures to polish this up towards a marketing uh, painting uh, finish. So it will be a little bit more detailed. So, um, so even on this mountain, you added some sort of a, a, a significant contrast of values, right? You went like just that brush stroke that was just a, maybe a second ago, like 20, 15 seconds ago. You put down that it, shadow there, and that's just, just the lead in to the characters in the front? Or? It was to tidy up the background a little bit so the viewer's eyes goes where the most contract is. And in this case, it's where the ship is actually I, I um, know, happening, right? I know it changes later in the painting, but... At this point, while you're working on it, where, where do you want the viewer's eyes to be? I want them to look at the, the, the ship as as where the, the engine part was, because that's where the most contract is. And then second, you want... Second, I want to develop the characters more, so that this is this goes... The viewer's eye goes vertically up, check out the ship, down, check out the characters, up again. So there's nothing else Loop that I want to... Loop until infinity, until they like it on Facebook. Right? Yes, and there's okay. nothing else that I want to look at. There's, okay. The sand's not interesting, the ground is not interesting, the landscape is second to all the other things that's going to be happening. So in the meantime, you just paint while well, it's fun. Then. Yeah. Okay. Imagine like a back, backward uh, teardrop. So there's like a big big focal point on, on, on there and a small focal point down here. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay. 
You're just uh, defining more edges here. So I'm using two different uh, contrasting colors. So there's the, the kind of like the, uh, the white, the rice, uh, yellow yes. uh, color on the on the highlights. And then when I go into the, 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 the shadows, I start using more of a teal, more of a blue mm. or aqua there. Mm. But these are these will get kicked up a lot more later on. But right now I'm just trying to establish like a like a muted color color wash. I can like, imagine your head's moving around a lot when you're doing this stuff. Nothing too crazy. Yeah. Okay. And now you're making the. Okay. So I, do, I, I didn't like that change right there. I do struggle with this a little bit because I want to flatten out the bottom just so mm. that I can bring so that I can. Uh, make the top look a little bit more contrasty. Well, now it looks like they're in the swamp. Don't you yeah. think? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of dirty. Uh, it, it'll work itself out, I think. But I guess that's part of the process. You make the wrong decisions and then you make the correct ones. Yeah, you don't. You don't always make all the right decisions. Actually, it's kind of. It, it's it's good that you show a painting where you kind of do something differently I, and then you change your mind. I think it's important to show. Well, that we don't always make the right decision. No, no one, no, no one, one does. does. No one so does. You, instead of trying to hide that away, it's very important to explain, you know, how to deal with that. So, what were you trying to do now then? I'm trying to get the the light direction and how the light falls on the the the, the ground level there. Um, because it's not interesting just having a flat ground, and there's not much you can do. When it's when I want this to be a flat ground, mm. so so you want to break break that pattern up by using different lights, so maybe I see. shadow, a cloud shadows, or just um, unexplained random shadows and highlights. You want to do it in a way that's a little bit believable and it's not too cheesy. So you don't want just like one streak of light shining on your main character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. I got you. It's a lot of little, it, it's hard to talk about sometimes, these little strokes, because so much of it at this point is just you feeling yeah. the progression of the painting. And so this is a good time to talk about working on the entire painting at once. You're mm. not so locked into one area that you're just going to be rendering that out for uh, for quite a while. It's, it's important to actually, um, I, I paint zoomed out all the time because I need to look at the entire picture until I know that this this thing as entirety works right so Whoa. if i don't if i don't know that then if i just lock in painting little details in the engine block that's going to un unsettle the rest of the image i think uh, a lot of your viewers now have realized that you only ever work on your painting when it's all in full view right yeah you're never yeah. pressing control plus and just going right in there and i think that's uh, uh, even the strength of your videos now at this point in terms of teaching is that they've seen you do it time and time again. Like the, Regardless if you have a really detailed city or in this case a very detailed spaceship, you always keep the whole thing in a complete view. And I've learned that from it as well. From you. That's a very good point because there's an illusion of a lot of details in, in some of my paintings that it looks like there's just tons of things going on in the background, but really they're just tiny little brush dabbings that I do in the full view when I'm looking at the entire painting. I think uh, I should add a little bit over there, I should add a little bit over here to balance it mm, out. Mm. But it's never that I'm just zooming in and detailing one single part at a time. Well, you're making them think that though. That's the that's the power. You make them think that you did that. Yeah, you know, once you really go into the details, you can spend a lot of time, you can spend countless hours without actually impacting the entire painting, you know, as a whole. Mm -hmm. So unless I'm doing a, a, a matte painting or something, I'll be very mindful of not going into details too early or too much. Hold on, what are we doing here? This is a big move here. It's a big move because I cropped out um, the a section out the, the bottom of the ship and I tried to add a cloud shadow over top to really to, to make the, the bright parts a little bit brighter. Because when you are dealing with highlights, there's only so much white you can use. Uh -huh. Your your monitor is not going to produce a brighter white just because you ask it Especially to. Especially in other people who are looking at the painting. Exactly. So so the way to make your brights look brighter is actually to darken down the surrounding areas uh, that's that's right next to it. So in this case, if I wanted to to push more contrast in the highlight and shadows, I'm actually going to be darkening down some of the other areas, some of the, the, the surfaces mm. facing away from our, our focus points. 
So that's actually going to create more of a contrast in where the highlights are. What is your mindset right now? It seems like you're, you're still working on it as a whole. You're not ready to move on to the characters. I'm not quite ready yet because I, I feel like the ship, the set of the ship needs some, uh, I don't know, little little care, a little, little rubbing here and there. Mm-hmm. So, and, and well, like they see, uh, for a lot of people, like they, they wish they could get to this rubbing stage, right? Like that they don't have. And that's why I think that the ZBrush approach is so valuable. Like you, you tell, because it does did all that work for you. So now you can just rub it and like kind of like move it and like slowly, subtly adjust it. You know? Yeah, what I mean? yeah. Instead, I because a lot of people they'll struggle with getting the original values, right? And, and that's why this is so good now that you can just go straight yeah. to just kind of like moving it, like oh, a little more light here, a little more gray here. Just, just rendering light and shadow, like a strong one to three light and shadow while trying to shape this thing accurately is going to be a challenge because you you're getting all the the reads and all the cast shadows on the engine part over there but you're also trying to at the same time uh, construct this thing you know almost symmetrically you know left to right and placing it at an angle now that's kind of difficult when you're just starting off even for me this is something that i don't want to go into head on it's going to take a while and it mm. might not look good I'll, I'll make a mistake and i'll spend half an hour trying to mm. fix it I so see. to jump through that that complete skip through that you know process i can just either practice a lot or or actually go into zbrush and try to do something really quick mm. i'm not worried about you know flattening out things and making a perfect hard surface models or things like that but just having that simple light and shadow read zbrush is just a 3d program for anyone that doesn't understand what we're talking about zbrush zbrush is i you can quite literally google it z B R U S H. Okay, I think people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the people hey, that's hey, gonna hey. watch this video is gonna understand. What they'll, know, they'll know. They'll know. They know. ZBrush. Was, have heard of it. Uh, they might think it's slang. I mean, uh, you talked to me four years ago. Well, also ZBrush wasn't that popular four years ago. So some people were using it, and then the people that started using it early on got a a much. Um, the people that started using it nice early on, they got jobs at advantage. Valve, and they got jobs at Blizzard. <laughs> so, so it's it's quite interesting. They were the lucky like, ones. Right now, you can't really be a, a character artist, and not at least not a very successful one, without uh, being able to sculpt and at least do the details that these uh, ZBrush artists are, are able to do. So it's it is a very important tool, even in the concept art world. That you sometimes need to de- develop things and design things in three-dimensional uh, viewpoints. So it just makes you a stronger concept artist if you have things that are in three D first. That you can tell your director, well, look at this in three D, and they can say, well, I like it more from this angle, or I like would like you to extrude or push in this, or yeah, it, and it's a it very, just makes you more flexible. It's a and, very uh, artist-friendly tool. Well, especially no, well, let me let me get, you can't just like like what you're doing right now like you're doing a painting now concept arts painting yeah. with shapes and it's just but i don't think you can do that anymore to get in the industry now you have to also know 3d you have to also know at one point in the future you also need to learn how to compose it in like a in like a mobile still you know what i mean like i see what uh, i see what you mean um and it's more difficult it's not that you can absolutely cannot get a job as a concept artist but be, be mindful that at this day and age at this very moment, there's more concept artists than there has ever been in the history of <laughs> there, concept There must art. be a statistic somewhere, like every five minutes, a new concept artist appears I, on art station. Or I'm something not like that, right? sure if it's five minutes, but it, it, it <laughs> maybe, sounds... Maybe 30, maybe 30 seconds. Maybe 30 seconds. But, but this they're, is And they're good. Real. They're very good, too. This is very real because um, even to the veterans, there's uh, there's just a constant oh, flow gosh. of new okay. guys. You talk to, um, like, for instance, just the Sheridan guys that we have. The rock stars of Sheridan, let's say, uh, right. Matt Lau, yeah. uh, Tobias Kwan, yeah. uh, Peter Chan, yeah. uh, what's his name? Boyang Zhu, Ben, yeah. oh, ben, ben Zhu. Ben Zhu. Uh, like, let's talk the, about Ben Zhu. No, well, no, 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 but these guys, <laughs> these guys would, are, would definitely vouch for the fact that, like, um, the way they got in the industry, like, it's, 
now compared to now, yeah, you need a totally different set of skills. You need to know 3D. You can't just be really you, good at concept art anymore. You almost need to know more. Yeah, yeah, you have to know much more than those guys. And because, those guys are amazing at what they do, right? Oh, it, but it, now, not to not to uh, say that the guys that started before didn't have. No, no, no. They're no. they're amazing. <laughs> yeah. But but they but even they can acknowledge that now. If you if you're a new artist who wants to break himself in the industry, you have to be the kind of person who does kind of even what you just saw Frank do. And more, where well, you got to be able to utilize 3D and utilize、uh, compositions and After Effects, and even beyond that, it's gonna be crazy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I do agree with you. You were gonna say something. I interrupted you.、Um, what was I gonna say? I was gonna say、uh, something along the line of、uh, what you were rambling about. That <laughs> it was just, it's just more difficult, actually. You, yeah, yeah. yeah. Being good by all by yourself is not almost enough. Well, because we, if we just look back right now, even at this, like, this is what is it, like end of 2014. But just look look back on the on the concept art、um, about five or six years ago. About about the best concept art there was five or six years ago, and I want to compare that to maybe a page of ArtStation right now, and and just look at how much concept art has really evolved until this point. You know, so all the old masters at that point,、um, what they what they competed with and what they what their art was bef- when they were hired, and then compare that to the art. Right now, you, you see, there's a lot of progression. The, the masters almost set the way; they paved the way for things to get a little bit, a little bit gradually more and more advanced.、Mm. And it's gotten to this point where it's it. There's definitely a learning curve, and it's very steep for beginners.、Mm. Uh, at some point, you're not going to be able to apply to a studio by just posting your art or the, as you're doing. You're, you're rendering armor right now. According、yeah. to the painting, right? Yeah, you're not going to be able to do that and show them that you can do that. You know what I mean?、Right. You're going to have to have some sort of like a reel that's not just a like a reel of all your best concept paintings after and one after another. You're going to need some sort of short finished film. Like、uh, it's not going to be、uh, at first in the next five years. It'll be a lot like、uh, who is the guy who did、um, Lineage Two. Mm. Lineage two. Do you remember those Photoshop paintings that were moving? Oh right. Oh, what, 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 was, was it Lineage two? Was it Guild Wars two? Guild Wars two. Guild Wars two. Excuse me. Yeah, in Guild Wars two. It's gonna.、Uh, you're gonna start like that, but eventually, at some point, you're going to have to move in beyond that and have full motion kind of 3D、uh, renderings,、It's, 2D renderings, all co-、uh, uh, combined、uh, into one thing, and that's going to be your pitch to get. That says hire me. It's、right. uh, it's pretty cool because、uh, I'm glad you mentioned this because uh, uh, some of the concept artists right now they are actually、um, using more tools than just paint to to get their idea.、Across. Oh, definitely. So definitely. they're they're developing these IPs well, rather, right? In the last in the last three videos, we talked about photo bashing. Yeah,、like、well, photo bashing. I think that's something that、uh, concept artists at this day and age will have to do,、mm. or at least know how to do. Mm. Um, unless you just have a complete different style that just completely excels,、um, but we're, we're talking about we're talking about artists like、uh, um, Anthony Jones、uh, starting to explore with Unreal Engine Four,、um, and we're talking about artists that's trying to use uh, uh, use like ZBrush as their dominant tool of concept art making, and just. Different artists using different tools to get ahead. You know,、um, I think it's, there's definitely an advantage to that. You know, you develop your own IPs and you use this, these dif- different tools to get it really get it get it way ahead of everyone else who is just coming into the game right now. There's a lot to learn. You know, and、uh, one of the tools I mentioned、uh, early on in my other videos was Modo. So. Modeling, even just hard surface modeling, how we consider as hardcore modeling before, become a lot easier now for for artists, and and it, this becomes a, a a little bit of a struggle. I remember I was at SIGGRAPH this year, and I I went to the the job fair to talk to some of the people in、um, visual effects industries, and the the general consensus that were giving me, the idea that they were giving me, is actually that. A map painter role almost doesn't exist anymore.、So, uh, I'm I'm talking about a map painter role in the traditional sense that they 
they take a Photoshop, they take a take a plate, and they apply that plate to their file, and then they, they a, a palette. You mean? No, a plate. A, a plate. A plate in in the sense of what's a plate? A plate is a is a map painting term where they describe the 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 source. Image that comes from、oh, the camera. Oh, okay, okay, never、so、mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the plate could be could be a, a a frame from the footage they shot,、oh, or it could be a photograph that they that they have. So something that you start with,、mm. right? So generally, a plate is something that's in.、Oh, uh, it, it, what is it? it? I don't think it's in log space. So、mm-hmm. a plate is something that's in log space. Log is a color space that's、uh, uncompressed.、Mm-hmm. So it's different from how we're working in in, in concept art. That this is a R, R, RGB space, color space. That's Compressed, and you get about about this much of light and that much of shadow. But the log space is uncompressed. Now,、okay. jumping、uh, your beyond point that, was, my your point, point was that just knowing how to take that from、uh, from a plate to a flattened out finished painting with you know alpha channels is not going to be enough to land your job in studios like、uh, uh, Digital Domain or ILM. So where where things really matters. Where they're concerned is that they're looking for or Valve. They're looking. Valve isn't really a, a visual effects artist. I'm talking <laughs> actually about just cinematics right now. Right? My dream <laughs> is Valve. <sorry. laughs> we're talking about this in a minute, and we're going to talk about、um, uh, Valve. But so they're actually like environment、um, artists now.、Mm. You know, so how the traditional sense of environment artist is that you model your environments, you do shaders a little bit,、oh, and then say, say, say this. How about this? That、uh, was atmosphere. 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 <laughs> There is the level、oh、that you're talking about. Oh my god! We're talking. We're about... not. Look, they're not looking for environment or concept artists anymore. No,、right? no, no. They're no. looking for people who create an atmosphere. How do you create an atmosphere, Frank? You don't just drink, paint well anymore. <laughs>、oh, wow. Now, to create an atmosphere, you need things like moving visuals.、Um, also, you need sound. I think we're getting off topic a little bit.、So、no, let we're let me, not. Let me get. Let me wrap. Right back and 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 before we jump onto the next topic, what I mentioned about visual effects and this play thing is that map painters are more evolved now, and they need to know nuke and they need to know three D to and they need to texture their entire scenes. So you're actually not painting a flat image, but you're painting an entire three D scene and texturing it, and also、uh, what's the thing? Um, uh, uh, making it move. So camera projection is actually in Nuke very important if you want to go into map painting. I actually think this is probably be very motivating to hear because learning a program is the easiest thing you can do. Honestly,、uh, it's very hard to learn how to render. It's very hard to learn how to make a good composition. It's very hard to figure out the right focal points, and it's very hard to、uh, anatomy is hard. Wow.、Um, uh, anatomy or or or. Lighting is hard. Like、uh, figuring how light affects it, like that's difficult. It may take it more、uh, than a couple months to do. Anatomy, ju- not just in terms of muscle anatomy. Also, there's there's a lot of anatomy in environment painting as well. Yes, and th- and th- and this is and these are these are this is difficult. That's hard to learn. But to learn a new program, that's easy. But the the big secret is that a lot of people don't realize that they don't know that. To learn a new program, to learn a lot of these new cutting edge programs that are coming out in、uh, 2014 alone, it, 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 to put them on your resume, it doesn't take much work to say that you understand them. And I think I, I personally think it's one of the motivating things now of trying to become a new. And that's why there's so many concept artists because they're smart. They see that oh, I can learn this program and I can get a job easily because I can learn these programs really fast. And please don't pay for thirty thousand dollar education for that. <laughs> we're not we're not running out of people uh, uh, education out of business yet. So、yeah. I'm just saying that、um, uh, what Levi said was right. That you don't need to dedicate lots and lots of time to just on learning softwares. These actually you follow a tutorial closely. You do it properly. Softwares are almost just second to your your actual taste. If you have a good taste, you can get through. You can burn through softwares in a relatively quick fashion. Well, good taste is a little complicated, right? Right. Yeah. Everybody thinks they have good taste. Well, Now, they, they, if you they, truly believe you have good taste, then don't press pause. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta explore that a little bit. No, no, no. It, 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 I, I, th- I think it, right. It, with good taste is something. You can, it's not something you can really talk about, right? You can't say that. Oh, this sucks because I have better taste. It, it's a. It's a little bit complicated, right? 
Yeah, yeah, you know, there's a discrepancy between your taste and also the taste that the general uh, public kind of accepts. Let's you know? look at okay for for once in this video, can we con let's concentrate on what you're painting? Well, I'm just rendering the armors. Yeah, well, then that's why I felt like it was a good time to talk because you were just rendering armors. But like, if you look at these characters here, like the what the way he arrives at a finish point, like let's look at the center character in the middle that he's not working on. He's working on the right one. But the center one that he felt like was more or less finished at this point, he stopped there because his taste dictated that it was okay. Right? His taste is dictated that that's exactly at the point. Like, ah, that's pretty much what I think looks good at this point, right? I'm going to leave it for a while to work on the others to bring them up to speed a little bit. Mm -hmm, let, mm -hmm. the, let the background two guys catch up a little bit. Um, I struggled with the right guy a little bit because uh, the, the the way he stands before I arrived at this point was yeah it's bad taste it was bad taste it was like <laughs> these guys are like, awkwardly walking and they're not they're not really walking you know what I mean so mm -hmm. they're like they're like kind of putting a step you know one foot in front of the other but they're yeah, kind of tripping yeah, out yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And now I just wanted them to hold a, a uh, yeah. bigger gun and just like act cool. A lot of people have this kind of issue where the, you really sometimes struggle well when you're doing the painting like this do you struggle through it i struggle the hell through it and is it like a it's a, it's yeah. like a it's kind of like working out at a gym in a way like you're just kind of like oh this is so hard but i'll no, keep going yeah. at it or what do you yeah, think I, I wouldn't compare this to gym gym is more like studies you know you you athletes go to gym to keep their body in prime condition now artists do studies to keep their hands warm and their brain functioning and rendering all the time for I don't know for portfolio or for just like this is supposed to be a good painting that you wanted to, wanted to do. This um, this goes back to my my other video when I said that you don't have to worry about making good paintings all the time. You know that's that's a little bit hard. Mm -hmm. That's actually really hard because mm -hmm. you're giving yourself that stress. You're not performing to your, your the best of your abilities. In my other video, I mentioned how important it is to just set out to do a bad painting. Because that keeps your brain working and and it gives you that edge to just keep on doing what you're doing without worrying about the consequences of what if this doesn't work out? You know, what if I need to throw this away? I have wasted, have I really wasted this amount of time? So here I'm still struggling with the left guy. What is it? Well, he, his pose is completely weird. His it feels like wind is is only affecting him, really. Yeah. Which is okay. So I need to really get these uh, people posed correctly before I ever put anything else on them. Well, there's a lot of concept artists who would be really good at this part. I mean, but you would say you struggle with it a bit for a while, right? I do. I don't think I do this nearly enough. That's mm -hmm. why I struggle with it. Well, that's why you're learning. And that's why you're trying it, which is good. Yeah. So, yeah, it's important to identify um, where you're strong at and where your, your weaknesses are and work on your weaknesses to bring them up to a level where you're comfortable with. Still going at it at the left character. It's Tons of fixing up things to do, you know. I'm I I wouldn't consider myself very strong with characters at all. There's been a, a period of time where, you know, I'm just hired to do environments almost for two years entirely. That's all I did, you know. I designed so it for kept it. you. It keeps you on environments. It man. keeps me on environments, and when I do characters, I kind of struggle a little bit. It's not that I don't, I can't really just get them done. It's that when I do them, I always feel a little bit unnatural. I'm, you know, I could say I'm rusty, where I just never really had the practice, but. This is good, you know. I'm putting three three characters in a painting, and it it forces me to be on edge a little bit, you know. You're gonna you're gonna have to work harder to sell me on this this cape, man. Because yeah. like, <laughs> honestly, if this cape is gonna be like that, then you better work a little bit harder on it. <laughs> I'll work for it. Don't worry. I'm sorry. It's all right. I'll do something. This is where I zoom in. This is where I'm gonna go. All right. right in Finally, there. we're I'm zooming working in. Working on the mask over there. Okay. I don't know what's going on. So apparently, these characters are called the uh, Titans. Titans. Yeah. And I um I, I I looked it up. 
I actually watched a few live streams of um of this uh, this game because I was curious about it. I didn't want to watch any reviews because reviews are a little bit uh, compromised. But I watched um, this uh, Titans. This um, what's it? Called? What is this game called? Destiny. Destiny. Yeah. Destiny. Sorry. <laughs> I watched some Destiny live streams on Twitch TV, and it seemed a little bit repetitive. Repetitive, but it seemed like the kind of base where they will add content, and I'm sure Bungie's a very smart company. Right. So they probably have all sorts of very interesting and fun content to add. I felt it was a little weird that they uh, they wouldn't allow reviews at first because it was um, what was their excuse that you could not experience it with you many people. Exp- well, I think one of the arguments was that you couldn't experience the entire game without putting in yeah, so much so much hours. I suppose, and it it, it kind of sucks for them because so yeah. many people will think like, oh, it's a controversy. Oh, they don't want reviews. Yeah. Like, oh, because they want to be like, and like, I and this case is like, well, guys, like, I'm sure, like. Yeah, sure, the corporate loves that. Corporate people love that, but mm. also the guys that are actually making the game, they know it's true that they need this, they need an actual user base before they can judge this stuff. Uh, based on what I've seen, uh, like I just said before, uh, at, uh, right now it seems repetitive, repetitive. But it's pretty obvious to me that this is the kind of game that will thrive once they have lots of content to deliver. Thrive? Thrive. Okay. I'm sorry. Thrive. Do you not know this word? Thrive. I understand. I'm making a Ryan joke. Oh, what's a Ryan joke? It's one of the short films that came out a long time ago when he said, when the character said, "I want to see you thrive," and and Ryan was like, "Thrive." See, never mind. <laughs> I see. See, also, I I feel just like Ryan right now. I'm just like, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. But yeah, this this game will, uh, as you say, fry. Yep. Once it has very lots of content. Yes. To offer. Um, well, Bungie said that the game becomes almost a, a different game in, in 20 hours. Mm. When, you, when you're putting 20 hours and the, the game what? mechanics kind of feel different. It's like well, you start, they're, start, not, start like a meta let, game. Let me simplify what <laughs> Bungie wants. Bungie wants you to be on the train at home from work mm. and check your phone and see a Destiny um, notification there and say, your friends are all doing this, join up. And then you say, yeah, and yeah. Then you go home and that's all you do until you fall asleep. It would be funny. That is the goal. And so I think they're very capable of making that if they just add more content. That would be a fir- so awesome. It, it is a first person shooter. It is. This is a uh, first person shooter is the genre that people are obsessed with. They love it. They always looking they for associ- new ways to shoot people. They associate with casuals. Yes. But uh that that just means that you're trying to make the casual market have better taste i don't know this gets a little bit weird now because yeah, this, <laughs> this, this kind of gets into my kind of a, a no. philosophy about uh how to about. make people like have better taste but yeah and also if you really want them to sometimes you just don't want them to have better taste but anyway no, i think no, bungie no, i think the people are we here really to educate the masses no we're the- not no we're not but i'm just saying that bungie is very smart and even the game is a little lacking at this moment like even i'm never going to buy the game I'm never going to be interested in it. I but probably will. I can I'll, acknowledge, I'll get a PS4 I, when I, I can acknowledge and respect the decisions they made, but I can also kind of see where corporate kind of screwed them up a bit. But hopefully it still works out through the strength of the director and through the strength of their art leads. Amen. Amen to that. Okay, what are you doing now? <laughs> Outside of our opinion, the reason I was talking is because all you were doing was rendering armor, and yes. now suddenly you're doing Horizon. There's not there's not much I can talk about with armor. It's just uh, you you need to get that accurate where the light direction is. So keep in mind you're at light direction, then and you know it's pretty much light and shadow. Well, what is this here? Uh, cloud. Uh, working on the top there. Look, you accidentally hit the brush. Yeah. Window. Yeah. How. How unprofessional! How unprofessional is that? I don't know. I don't know how I can just keep on doing this and get away with it. The, the, the if your viewers notice that they're tilting their head yeah. while they watch this, yeah, that means they're painters. <laughs> they're tilting. Do you know what I mean? Head. Like you ever, did, you know did you the notice how I flipped the painting? Nope. You didn't notice I flipped the painting. Well, because I was talking about Bungie. <laughs> okay. But now I'm tilting oh, my right. head a lot, and that <laughs> means I must be an artist. <laughs> I think you might be. I could say that you are. Oh gosh, forget it. Uh, 
What is your next story? Okay, so you wait, rendered wait, their armor, you I, rendered her horizon line I, a little I bit pulled, stronger. I pulled the guy a little bit upward there yes, to, yes, to, yes. to overlap with the horizon line, because okay. you never want to carry that entire line wait straight. Wait a minute, uh, are you adding birds? I'm adding birds. Oh, gosh. Oh, my God, right? Okay. Okay. Well, they can't be dots, Frank. Well, they're going to live as dots right now, because I command it. Okay, but they can't be dots forever, okay? They're not going to be dots forever. Okay, smoke. So this thing just crashed? Not really. I have no idea anymore. I don't really know. Let's take it to the edge. When in doubt, flat out. <laughs> That's actually a pretty uh, strong philosophy in today's age of concept art. Right? It's, it wasn't really a philosophy in concept art. Ever, you know, which is no, let's, quiet. no, let's make it right now. Let's right? just say, when, when in doubt, doubt flat, flat out. out. That was a Colin McRae. It's quote. like we finish each other's sentences at the exact <laughs> oh, same, same time. time. Okay. Holy shit. All right. <laughs> flat out. Well, because now the, well, there was a phase, 2011, 2012, to just render the hell out of everything. There was a phase. There, were, there was always a phase. It's like almost there's trends in concept art, you know? Well, it it's slowly becoming that. Especially as the masses become more and more good at it. It's no longer just 10,000 people who are really good at it. It's more like 100,000 people are really oh, good oh, at it. Oh, man. Imagine. 100,000 people are really good at concept art now. You know what I mean? And, and, next, and next year, it'll be like 500,000. And I the year after, it'll be that. a million people. Wow. A, a million concept artists. A million really good ones, not just shit ones. Well, really I'm good. out of job. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Frank. Don't worry. <laughs> but I'm just saying it's it's very interesting. I think it's really cool. I, I do. What, wait, wait, what are you using? What's your brush right here? That's this making? is actually uh, 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 the second brush in my palette. Overlay. You're overlaying. I'm overlaying, and you can get my black. Uh, sorry, I can. You can get my brush set on my Gumroad channel. There's a basic brush set that I have compiled over the years. Uh, this is what where my go-to brush set is, and most of my brushes that I use for every painting of mine. Guys, he's just from. he's just using a circular soft brush. Exactly. Like, the first two brushes. Don't listen to <laughs> don't listen to what he's telling you right now because he's just using a circular soft brush on an overlay layer. Well, Do you, not be fooled by Frank Hong right now, please. Just, you, well, you can't just be calling out on my <laughs> bullshit every time when I do this, all right? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I've downloaded. I have Frank Hong's brush that is useful but just not for what he's doing right now <laughs> yeah it, you can pretty much get through most of the painting with the round brush the basic ones it would be okay no one would know uh, more armors What are you doing right now? You're doing the gun, you're doing the hand. A lot of little micro rendering, I guess. Micro rendering is where it's at. Now, it, um, I'm not sure how my workflow differs from other concept arts, but um, when I render something, I, 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 I give myself a time constraint. It's like I, I will never be locked into this armor, for, exa for example, for like uh, uh, over... That's actually really smart. Dude. Extended period of time. That is actually really smart. If this isn't working out, and in five minutes, this is still not working out. I'm leaving it. It's done. That's actually really awesome. No, 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 guys, guys, no, no. that is intense. Like I feel like, <laughs> I feel like I just learned a lot just hearing that yourself. Because there, you do give yourself time to to fix things that that's not working. Well, no, it's because any of your listeners right now or viewers or whatever, they know that they um, they've tried things and failed at them. But yeah. if they if you tried the exact same thing with a time limit. Think of how like you'll settle for it and just keep going and you'll come out with a finished painting. Yes, I do this for every painting of mine, but just like if you're trying to render something and it it isn't working in like five, ten minutes and that's the time you give yourself, if it isn't working after that, you failed. You're done. You're you, that's 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 the that's <laughs> the end day, of painting sir. for you. Good, Good day, day sir. sir. You know, you move on and you do something else. Because ideally in the in the later part of your paintings, you should be able to do this Faultless. I noticed that actually now that you bring that up, even in your last city recording, I noticed and I, I didn't realize until you said now, but you do give yourself a time limit. Like, you, especially if you zoom in on something, you'll yeah. zoom in on something and you will never, ever, 
stay more zoomed in for more than five or ten minutes. Exactly. You just say like, okay, and if you know, even if you don't like it at ten minutes, you zoom out and you keep working, and it, maybe you'll come back. Maybe not. Now I'm not sure that this is exactly a good habit to have, but this has served me over the years because it gives myself. Uh, a good baseline for how long my painting is going to be, well, and I can of, estimate that. Right? Well, well, a lot of it comes from the industry, yeah, right? Like yeah, you have a yeah, deadline. That's true. That's true. A lot of it, and, and, but 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 let think about people who are never have worked in the industry. They they they're working on their paintings and they're struggling and they're having such a freaking hard time with it. It because like so. they just agonize over it, but also they don't realize that the reason they're agonizing over it is because they're not forced on a time limit either. Yeah, they could just sit. Like, imagine if you hated this cape that you were working on just now, right? Yeah. If you hated it, and imagine if you were never happy with it, you could stay on it for hours. You, you could, know, you could follow it. Hours and hours and hours, you and never move on. Forever. And yeah. a lot of the people who are watching, uh, maybe watching this video, are, uh, uh, maybe not as well, are people who have not worked in the industry. They don't have that pressure, right? And so what's important to say is that if, if you have not worked on it, uh, yeah. if you do have not had an industry job and you never have felt that pressure of rushing, you need to kind of enforce that yourself. Give yourself 10 minutes and you'll realize how much faster you finish a painting. You know what I mean? And how much more faster you appreciate one. That is true. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying, Frank? Uh, this is a very good point, actually. I'm glad you brought it up. It's actually a really good point. Uh, if you work on... Uh, uh, as you're timed, you'll be kind of surprised. Yeah. You, uh, you just, you, uh, just try this. Try this, guys. Do a speed painting as long as you want. Then do a speed painting in 30 minutes. And yeah. and when it gets to 25, finalize it. If you're doing a speed painting for as long as you want, that's not really a speed painting. Well, it? I'm just saying. Oh, gosh, <laughs> oh, my God. goodness gracious. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that... If like okay, should we go back to the cape analogy? No, or, yeah, it's fine. What I'm saying is that if you weren't up happy with that cape, yeah, you just, would keep working on it until the end of time yeah. because you're forced to stop at it. You keep working on the rest of the painting, and eventually but, you learn how to make that uh, cape work. I think I I impose a time limit on myself because I'm just a naturally impatient. Because you're person. naturally smart about it. <laughs> I'm rather impatient, but. I don't allow myself to noodle something endlessly. No, I, but nobody does. You, you get you get probably like three chances. If it doesn't work on the third third try, you're you're, you're keeping it. Move this on. You move on. You're, move on. This is done. Get out of there. Yeah. Yeah. When you are actually working. Gosh, guys, like <laughs> you're working in a studio. You ha your time is their time. You, when you're wasting your time painting something, you're wasting the company's time. You're sugarcoating it. Still, you're sugarcoating it. Well, what should I say? How uh, how do you how would you give this to them straight? Time yourself. Yeah, yeah. Well, time yourself in a way that's you don't have a stopwatch in front of you, but in your mind. Time yourself with a stopwatch in front of you. Really? You don't want to, you want to do that? I never did. Yeah, do it. Do it. All right. Do it. Yeah. What 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 he said? Time yourself with a stopwatch. Time it's yourself like, with a stopwatch in front of you. This painting needs to be done in like. No, no. You know what? Because they'll realize they'll laugh their asses off when they say, "Wow, I've been working for working for forty five minutes." On this nose and look how much progress I've gotten and they'll just think they're ridiculous they'll be like wow I I can't this believe is, it they'll uh, learn they'll this learn is more that. of a concept artist thing you know because you see a lot of the concept art posted for high high visibility projects and you wonder why is this look so rough but everything looks so like together you know? they really have a time constraint you don't want to do something that's just way it takes way long and it never gives you the time to move on to the next things that's maybe more important and you, your art director really needs to look at things constantly you especially to, in the industry right you can, you, you need to be del delivering you need to be just like getting things out so you get your first stage thumbnail second stage you know uh, uh, sketch and then developed paintings and and revisions you need to be constantly delivering things at a steady rate and you can't do that if you're just noodling for two days on the same stage because once in a while you're going to be working on a project that's freelance and and you're going to be charging them day rate right how are you going to be able to deliver on the day rate when they're you know on their ass consistently
how are you going to charge somebody an, an honest rate when you know that you're liable to spend an hour on the girl's eye because it's not pretty enough? If the eye is about 20% of the picture, sure. Okay, sure. maybe if the painting is two big eyes, then yeah. <laughs> Alright, we're working, you see, you're still rending armor now, and this is all just a matter of taste, right, at this point. But what do you reference? I, I, your privilege in this point is that because you're referencing a, an IP that's already out, you mm -hmm. actually just have to look at the official art. And I you have can to look, look at what they have, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And so I, so what you do is just you have their art. Um, you, know, you have Bungie's art on the other window while you're rendering this. Yes, I do. And this should just be fun then at this point, really. It is fun. It's kind of like flex, flexing your muscles a little bit. You're just doing it because um, this this is a practice and it becomes a study, sort of, sort of a sort of a little uh, a study of arm or study of your rendering techniques. So you're still keeping in mind of the light direction, but you're trying to uh, get this as on model as you possibly can. But because it is, it is a fan art. It's not official art. You know, it's not uh, for the company. So you don't have. It doesn't have to be uh, required 100% on model. You can give your give it your own taste. I don't have an art director to to tell me how I'm supposed to pose these characters and what kind of feel it is. So you're you're free to explore to a certain extent, right? But you know, if, since you're doing a, a fan art, and you say that this is a, a fan art to to Destiny, then you need to have these characters fit in their world. You know, at least it needs to be a model enough that uh, fit in your world. That means, AKA, he means you can have fun just rendering it because you know the reference. yeah because you know the reference are there. The things are designed already. The things are designed. <laughs> Finally, the other character. And, and also, you managed to work out that cape character. Wait, you flipped it, didn't you? I did, I did. Oh, I told my... you. I told you I flipped it. Oh, okay. Now, now you see how that kind of looks, because the light's coming from the other direction, and now... Okay, okay. Let's see here. Looking good. Um, when you're putting three characters against each other, you almost have to treat them as a whole. So the, the silhouette of these three together has to look... Um, Look, at least not fighting with each other. Well, not fighting compositionally. Yeah, so compositionally, it kind of needs to be combined. Mm. We're going to like it's the first. Well, this is the first time in this video that we're really concentrating on the kind of noodling that you do. Well, I wouldn't call this noodling. It's more like um, yeah, you're still giving yourself enough enough you're, time. To... You're you're finding it. You're, yeah, you're you're finding it at this point, and I guess uh, you're using a, a rendering skill where you're putting a base tone and you're putting the tone that belongs on top of it based mm. on the rest of the painting, and there are there are some people who do not understand that at this level what that is, right? They think that it's kind of a little bit of like magic. Okay, like you can't you, you you're going to, there's a lot of people who this what you're doing right now like for example you just did that arm all right and that's to me when I look at that that's just black mm -hmm. two gray blotches to explain where the metal is on their arm and then one metal gauntlet you're, and then it's this gray on top of that you're, right? you're designing with shapes actually. yes yeah. you're just designing with shapes and that's and if you can't make a basic shape like that like he uh, Frank hasn't even rendered it at this point that arm that left arm on the or right arm rather his right on that character if you can't just even do that or can't even see that he just did that then you still have to just go back to photoshop and start painting some spheres you know what i mean because <laughs> oh, wow. well i don't know because it looks like you did more than that but it, you didn't actually all no, you it's did a, it's all a you flat, did flat silhouette all you with, did was just paint the flat shapes that were there and with you two shapes on top yes and if you wanted to render on top of it you lock it and you add more rendering to it, and rendering you start in simply you just it, add lighting to yeah, it. Yeah, giving a gradient, giving yeah, a lighting. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's well, exactly. Well, this it. is this was a very difficult thing uh, four or five years ago. I didn't even realize that. I thought there was some secret, like how the hell do you do this? It's like no, it's like certain shorthands, right? There was always the well, thing about well, shorthands. okay, yeah. There's shorthands that make it look sexy. Yeah, that make you think like, wow, I'm really behind. But it's also very it, at a point you realize it's very obvious that it's just smart 
like logic that this shape would have this color to represent it. Like designing with shapes is very important. Mm -hmm. Just how, just as how I made that uh, sniper rifle there with the simple opaque shape, and I'll, I'll drop it back in the in the layer. Yeah, watch what he does. Watch what he does with the sniper rifle. Because all you need is a is a decent shape. Not everything needs to be rendered. You have to be you have to realize not every piece of the armor has to be rendered in like three dimensional mm -hmm. lighting. And in my opinion, you learn more from watching somebody simplify than actually embellish. And so when you see Frank and the way he handles this sniper rifle, you're going to learn more from that than from his embellishments of something else. And, and so pay attention to that. I, I, I mean, do, yeah, I do think that's important in a way that it, simplicity saves you a lot of effort and time and it also makes make where your focal point where you actually render that much more important that much more stand out well it's just it's, it's also just not as hard as people make it out frank i mean it's a it's a it's also it very takes, it takes it's very straightforward to, yeah. no, it takes again it's very straightforward so yeah it's very straightforward nice flip it's 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 made out as this big, um, it, it, but that's part of the reason why there's so many concept artists these days. Because a lot of people have figured out, wait a minute, like I mean, yeah, it doesn't painting take a lot, shape it? like it's it's <laughs> like I can do that. Yeah. It's, it's 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 no longer uh, a trade secret that this can be done relatively easily, easily. Yeah. Concept art. Hmm, I like what you're adding to this character right now. See, now this is a little bit beyond where I would go. Now we're starting to get into the real, like, high, higher level. Like, you you added a. Uh... Now this is still the the in the part one. Now the, in the, the in the part two, we're actually going to go a little bit further. Hmm, but, but what uh... you said, what you started doing that. Now I'm realizing, I'm going, damn, that's nice. <laughs> All this is actually is just one layer on top, overlay. Get that soft brush in and start. And start blooming out where the highlight is going to hit. Now that's not saying you're gonna just make the entire armor all glowy and mm -hmm. stuff. Well, you still have to render it. Yeah, yeah you still gotta render it, and you gotta be very careful about where you put the lighter parts and the darker parts. So you're gonna push, push and pull a little bit from from the lightings, and so your base shapes now have a another dimension on top. Mm, it right? really added to it. Just in that moment, like I realized, whoa, this painting is uh, significant. <laughs> It looked really good. Yeah, yeah just when I see you yeah, switch it like that, yeah. Bit, uh, it's a bit, a little bit heavy handed. Oh, it's still gonna, a little heavy, but like. I'm gonna leave it there for a moment because it's all gonna, all gonna get fine tuned later on. All right, so we're gonna wrap this up for the first part of the video. Uh, check back on the second part where we're gonna start taking this painting a little bit further into a marketing sketch with all the textures and photographs that we're going to use. So the background of the ship is gonna get that rust filter and everything's going to get a little bit dirty down and the characters are actually going to be fine-tuned into a complete um i don't know what is it like a like a polished metal feel all right thank you for watching and please subscribe to my youtube channel and check back on my gum road and add me on facebook for all of the latest updates i'll see you again on the part two Remember, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me. And I also start another series on critiquing and paint overs. So if you have a painting that you want to get critiqued, send it to me at my email, frank.f.hong at gmail.com. Now, I'm not going to be able to get to everyone, but I'm going to try to get to at least three or four each week. So get your in first. All right, that's good. So uh, Bye-bye. I'll see you again in part two. <laughs>